This is pre-calculus, topic four, practice assessment. This is the last three of the uh, prove the identity problems off of the topic four practice assessment. And uh, let's dig on into them. Um, there's a couple of different techniques, you know, approaches that we can always take on these sorts of things. Um, you know, I could turn everything into terms of sine, in terms of sine and cosine and that sort of thing. But I think I'm going to wait off for that for a second because I notice here that this looks like a, a Pythagorean identity. And it is. This is the one where tangent squared um, plus one equals secant squared. So this is the same as secant squared. So I'm going to say that this is tangent squared over secant squared. And I think now I'm going to turn them into sine and cosine. So tangent is sine over cosine. So this would be sine squared x over cosine squared x over, and secant squared x, um, as we know, is 1 over cosine squared x. And so now notice what I have is, is like a fraction divided by another fraction. So I have this sine squared x over cosine squared x uh, divided by 1 over cosine squared x. When I divide by a fraction, the same is multiplying by it. So I could think of this as just being uh, times cosine squared x over 1. And that divides out, leaving me a uh, sine squared x, which is what I was looking for. That one's done. All right, next one. This one... Sure feels tricky. All right, there's a bunch going on here. Um, what I want to do is make it so they have a common denominator, denominator, and then I can um, I can combine them using using addition. But I think what I'm going to do that first is I'm going to take advantage of this one minus cosine because um, I know if I multiply that by one plus cosine. Notice, like, this is like a difference of squares. Minus cosine plus cosine. The middle term drops out. This ends up being 1 minus cosine squared x, which is a Pythagorean identity. That equals sine squared. So I'm going to take this first fraction, sine x over 1 minus cosine x, the second fraction, actually, and multiply it by this version of 1, 1 plus cosine x over 1 plus cosine x. And this is the conjugate of that. It's called the conjugate. And this is still, I'm just not going to touch this first fraction at all. But I'll still write it there. Um, so 1 minus cosine x times 1 plus cosine x is 1 minus, uh, sorry, 1 minus cosine x times 1 plus cosine x is 1 minus cosine squared x. So up top I have uh, sine x times 1 plus cosine of x over 1 minus cosine squared of x. And this is still coming along for the ride. And uh, this 1 minus cosine x, I know that sine squared plus cosine squared is 1. Subtract that from both sides. 1 minus cosine squared is sine squared. So this is a sine squared. So now I have um, 1 minus cosine of x over sine x plus sine x times 1 plus cosine of x over sine squared x. Now I want these to have a common denominator. So I'm going to multiply this one by this version of 1. So now I have, and what I'm going to do right now is I'm just going to distribute these into here. So this is, um, notice I have a common denominator, sine squared x. So the whole thing is going to be over sine squared x. Um, so I have a sine x minus sine times cosine plus sine x plus sine times cosine. Hoo-wee, that's a mess. But notice... Uh, couple nice things happen. Minus sine times cosine and plus sine times cosine cancel each other out. And so what I end up with now 
Uh, sine x plus sine x is 2 sine x. So 2 sine x over sine squared x. But sine over uh, sine over sine squared just leaves me a sine in the bottom. So now I have 2 over sine x. And sine x is cosecant. So this is 2 times cosecant x. And that one is proven. <laughs> And we took up all the space, didn't we? Hey, there's lots of different ways to do this problem. This is just the way that I did it. Um, if you get there, you get there. Um, so similarly, over here, I want to try and mess with this thing to get it to become a 1 plus a cosine squared. I could start turning everything into sine and cosine and power it out that way. I'm going to be a little, I think, trickier. Um, and I'm going to take advantage of this relationship that was over here, this uh, secant squared equals um, tangent squared plus one. So I'm going to replace that with a tangent squared plus one. So this is uh, tangent squared x plus one minus cosine squared x over tangent squared x. And so now notice that each of these things um, in the numerator divided by tangent squared. So if I do that, tangent squared into tangent squared goes once plus 1 over tangent squared. Sorry, I got a funny angle on it. And then minus uh, cosine squared is sine x. All right. So let's. Oh, you know what? I'm not even going to break that one up. I'm going to leave that as 1 minus cosine squared. Because I know that that leads to other staggering identity. That's sine squared. Right? Sine squared plus cosine squared is 1. Subtract that. Have this. So let me let me rewrite this one again. Um, I'm gonna have the tangent go tangent squared into tangent squared. That's one plus, and now this one minus cosine squared. I'm gonna leave that over tangent squared, X. and this one minus cosine squared. That's a sine squared. That's this relationship right here. So I have one plus sine squared over tangent squared. And uh, let's see. Well, let me see if I can get this into a cosine squared. So this is 1 plus uh, sine squared over tangent is sine over cosine. And so notice on this fraction, I have this divided by that. Divided by a fraction that's going to multiply by two. So I still have the one plus. But notice I have uh, sine squared times cosine squared over sine squared. Right? Take this to equal to x. That divides out. Leave me one plus cosine squared x. Whew! I got there.